It was 1981. Robert Desiderio was cast opposite Judith on One Life to Live, a role that was meant to last just two weeks. Neither could have known that the chemistry between them would change the show and their lives. I knew I was attracted to her from the very beginning. I had never met a woman like that. It was, I mean, I didn't know her. I didn't ever watch soaps. As I saw him on the set and I thought, I felt like I knew him. I felt like we were connected in some very deep, primal way. She was like those, the European actresses that I love. You know, she just had, she was, Judith was earthy and is earthy and, um, I just passionate. I, I loved working off of that because it was a lot of physicality that we did. And we started working together and we started doing scenes together and they started seeing the chemistry between us and they just started writing to it. You can't deny you love me and then after last night. It was incredible. I, I, I had never been able to open up with another person, let alone another woman before in my life. And I felt safe enough to be vulnerable and I didn't have to, you know, buy in into all the, you know, the masculine male stuff. And here was somebody who was not competitive with me and somebody who really took joy in what I was doing and what I was about and the places that I wanted to go and the things that I thought about. He was just a, a man and sure of himself and, and challenged me and great to look at. <laughs> After dating for six months, they moved in together. Now their personal and professional lives were in sync. Judith's career successes continued as she won her second Emmy. Winner of two Soapies and a Soap Opera Hall of Fame award, Judith graced the covers of dozens of magazines and even guest hosted Good Morning New York. But it wasn't enough. Judith wanted new challenges and started thinking about leaving the show. I knew that there was a deeper level inside of me and I had more to give. With the support of her family and friends, Judith found the courage to leave One Life to Live after five very successful years. It's the sound of our future, kid. They brought me back to finish up her storyline and our characters ran off together. And we ran off together in life and <laughs> on the soap. Judith had achieved what most people only dream of, love, fame, and success. But there was one secret battle she had been fighting all those years, her weight. When I was really little, I, I wouldn't eat at all. I remember actually the first night, and I don't remember how old I was, that I ate everything on my plate, and I completely cleaned my plate, and I said, oh, Th this is very good. This is a very good experience, and it was a, um, it was an experience that I, that I deeply connected to because I felt like I had accomplished something. Well, that was sort of the bad news <laughs> because it was the turning point for me, continuing to want to clean my plate, and uh, I cleaned my plate probably right up into one life to live, <laughs> and a little bit beyond that actually. Wade had never been a deterrent to her professional success or her personal love life, but it undermined her self-esteem. So Judith went on the diet roller coaster, losing and gaining until she ultimately peaked at 175 pounds. I look at how I looked, and I know that the way I look now and the way I looked then, it, it's two different people. It was a woman who was coming to grips with low self-esteem. So I went to the therapist and he, I said, I want to lose weight. And he said, well, you don't, you never learned how to eat. And so you have to learn how to eat. And he said, so I want you to go eat. And I became enraged. I was so angry. And I said, that is not supportive. That is not a way to tell a person to, to, to help a person lose weight. And he said, no, you don't understand. He said, you have no permission. He said, you don't understand what's going on in you. He said, I want you to eat. Which Judith did with a vengeance. She went home and ate whatever and whenever she wanted to. I was just in the closet about it. I was eating all the time anyway. I, I was eating half gallons of ice cream at a sitting. I was eating whole cakes, whole cakes and boxes of cookies, but I didn't have any permission. I was 
in the, it was a secret. It was I was in the dark about it, and now it was as though there was a light shed on it. So I opened the refrigerator door, and as I was fond of saying, I opened the light went on, and I did 20 minutes, and I just sat there in front of the refrigerator and I ate everything, and. Over a period of time, I would go to the refrigerator and I said, okay, I can eat whatever I want. I can eat whatever I want as much as I want. And I remember the day I opened the refrigerator and I said, well, since I can have, have anything that I want, what do I want? And it was a revelation for me. And I said, oh, I'll have a little bit of that and a little bit of that and a little bit of that. And then I was done. And then I started to lose weight. Ultimately, it took two years to lose 50 pounds and keep it off. It was another lifetime goal accomplished. I couldn't believe it, you know, when the first time I met her and she said I used to be fat. It's like, come on, what do you know from it? But she says, no, no, I used to be fat and I, it was very hard for me to uh, stay this weight and I exercise and I have to watch when I eat and I said, sister! Losing the weight allowed Judith to reinvent her image. Her manager, Herb, would help refocus her approach to acting and to life. Lifetime.